Okay, this is what it looks like this time. I did go shopping. Hey, it's care. Welcome to my ticket at the lake. So much for not hauling anymore. I'm not hauling. I'm not going to St. Vincent's specifically to haul. I'm going to St. Vincent's to drop stuff off. Honestly. They're not taking any donations until next week. And I was there and I've been looking for some double magazines for Amy and my hashtag using the same images project. And so I keep hitting St. Vincent's for that. I always look to see what wonderful things they have and I was weak and here we go. This is two separate hauls. One I went with my mom and one I went alone but I thought I'd combine them for enough stars to get to the moon and back. There were three packs of this. I'll probably kick myself for not for not getting them but the reason I wanted these is I've seen a couple of people take these just simple shiny stars and glue them in Christmas journals here and there. Just a few of these makes a page dance with light. It almost looks like it has Christmas lights on it. They're so cool. I I can see these being used in a celestial book in a, a dream journal. I have been collecting things for a moon themed, lunar themed project. And of course, a few shining silver stars in any of those would be great. Uh, you could also put them in any sort of winter book, sort of like snowflakes, you know, anything that glistles, glistens and sparkles in a, in a wintry, snowy journal would be great. So I, I can see lots and lots of uses for these. I think I'm going to put them in a pretty jar because this, I don't know how long this bag will last, but the first time I was there, they had this tiny little thing of similar stars. But there are three different sizes, at least three different sizes in there. And right there are the teeniest, tiniest, look how tiny those are, so tiny, compared to the regular size ones. And then there are some medium, medium size ones in there, but those teeny, tiny little buggers in red, green, and gold. So again, lots of uses for those ones for vintage. I don't think silver goes as well with vintage as gold does, so I'm happy to have the gold for sure. Speaking of vintage, I wish I could show you how much these weigh. These are old, seriously heavy metal paper clips of large and regular size, and I thought, oh, those would be great to rust, and so I tried it. There's a whole bunch of rust your metal. Rust your metals quickly recipes on YouTube. So I grabbed a few things, some old safety pins, some new safety pins, some aluminum pop tops, which didn't do anything, of course, some fairly new binder clips. And I put them in a bowl, in a glass bowl with vinegar, baking soda, and salt and a hydrogen peroxide. And they did change a little bit in the bowl. They didn't seem like they were doing much, but they are rusted and grungy and messy. This is a brand new bind. These are brand new binder clips, but they kind of got junked up in the process. The shine came off of them. I was surprised how little they changed, but now, now that they're dried and and old, I could, they have changed quite a bit. And I say changed, not necessarily rusted. There is a couple odd shaped paper clips in there too, which is kind of fun. So those would be fun for grungy, grungy projects. These for my Halloween journal. They're great little charms. A broom, a magic wand, good witch, bad witch. And since I'm of two minds all the time, I am always both. Some fun buttons. These are silver with maybe a crown on as a design. And cut that shank off and, and glue them on. You can tie them as is. Use them in slow stitching and some beautiful deep purple buttons. This I thought for my slow stitch stitching or my blueberry book. They are the color of blueberry, a purplish blue 
bluish deep purple. I don't know. I just really like them. They're very smart at by St. Vinny's. They probably do it all over the place, but when they get clothes that they can't sell or that are damaged or for whatever reason they're not going to sell them, they cut all the buttons off and sell these for 30 cents a pack. That's brilliant versus just throwing them away. This I got not because I want to do squares, but this, this squares template, they're nice and thin. They make great stencils to make. Uh, backgrounds on your journal pages. Uh, certainly, if you want to do squares, they come in handy, but that's not why I got it. I got it just to lightly stencil or vintage photo in some background interests, some visual layers or layers of interest. That was $1.59, brand new, never opened. I found this brand new. It was August, September. It was September when I got it. Just a fun, fun little magazine full of yummy pictures. This will be for glue booking. I will harvest mag, I will harvest it for all of my themes and then harvest it for my glue book, my daily glue book, and then use it either as a glue pad or the base for a journal. So, so you know, for 59 cents, I'm gonna get a lot of stuff out of here. This is not from the this is from my friend, my YouTube friend over at Harmony's Creations. Since we're talking about that, Harmony, I finally found something sparkly. This is a really, really cute little blazer. And I don't know if it's coming through on camera, but the sparkle is multicolor glitter. Tiny, tiny, tiny fine glitter. But it is just beautiful. And in the store, it looked black. Something like you'd wear for a New Year's Eve party or something. But it's, it's, and even in here, under these daylight lights, it looks black. Up here, it looks blackish brown. Maybe that's because it's faded. Because, yeah, down here, it is black. Up here, I don't know if you can see the difference. But I'm not losing my mind. It is black, but this is faded. From hanging on a hanger maybe at a it was probably at a summer garage sale and so up here where it was hanging on the hanger is all faded to a reddish brown but the rest of it is a deep luscious black and it's lined it's a very nicely made little jacket I'm gonna cut it apart I'm gonna make a journal cover out of it it is by R and Kate evening wear I don't know is that a brand is that a thing I don't know it has kind of obnoxiously ornate buttons in this horrible gold this must be from the 80s because that's the last time I remember that gold kind of trim being in but I will have no no problems cutting this up and I just wanted to if I had had Harmony's number I had a texted her right then and said look what I found something shiny finally because like I said before, we have a lot of flannel <laughs> and, and country gingham. Yeah, we got very few blingy. I did find another dress too. It was, it was black dress, sequined and beaded. The thing must have weighed 10 pounds for all the beading. And it was immaculately made and cared for. It was only $4. But I, I would never be able to cut that up. It was just such a beautiful dress. So I got that. So lots of fun stuff being had. I found a whole bunch of these and I, that were from the 60s. This is 61, several from 62, 63, 61, and 62. Oh, vintage work basket. My grandma used to get these in the 80s. I remember hers were from. I got all the holiday, October, November, December, and February for Valentine's Day. And I got this odd one. I think it's March. And somebody wrote on it, but I got it specifically for this ad. My grandma had this party pot. It was always in the box and she brought it out when she hosted card night. And when we had sodality night or whatever, she would get her party pot out and make coffee for everybody. I So I had to have that just for this particular picture. But these are great finds. They're just teeny tiny. They were 60 cents. 
I may kick myself again for not getting all of them from the 60s, but they're fabulous for old ephemera, genuinely old ephemera, and the ads are just terrific. You know, they're small, so they work in smaller projects as well as projects that are this size. They're the perfect size. A lot of times they have project templates in them, kind of like what Somerset Studio does now. You know, they give you papers and they give you patterns and things to try. Collections of wonderful old ads and the old pictures, and they smell every bit as old as they are baked Alaska recipes. This would be great. You know, how, there's so much in here that you could cut out for all your projects. A vintage glue book would be fun. All vintage stuff. If you're doing a, a knitting and crocheting book or a needlework themed journal, sewing themed journal, there's all kinds of stuff like that in there. Shorthand in just six weeks in the speed writing class. And they're all about the same, a whopping 15 cents they were when they came out. Needlework pointers, linen and lace, some fun either for, and I have I have gone ahead and just commandeered Franken phrases. I told Amy I think we should change the word just to, so everyone will play along and not scare off people with the poetry thing. I'm sorry I didn't think of it earlier, but Franken phrases seems to be quite popular. <laughs> Easier to remember, I don't know. But linen and lace would either be great for a, a just to put in a journal or in Franken phrases. Boy, have we come a long way in how we do crafting. Although there's that learn how to crochet in a bag, koodles, caboodles, koodles, cooties, um, doodles, poodles, popables. I don't know. I'll throw a picture up here. You know, there's nothing new under the sun, and that they're not much more sophisticated than this. Look at her old hat. So what would I use this for? Again, it will work in all kinds of projects. Cut them out for collage. Take something like this Christmas cards ad out, put a backing on it, and use it as a journal card. Um, something like this, Good Eating from Woods and Field. I'm doing a Hunter lodge themed thing for my cousin. This would go perfect in there. Venison kebabs would be right up his antler. Quail on trenchers. He would love this. 10 years before he was born, but that's okay. I would use the ads just in vintage journals. The the old-fashioned classified ads would be great for the backs of clusters because they're, they're so different. So I have five of those, and I have to remember to keep that one out so I don't forget why I got that one. <laughs> this I got from my mom's glue book. I'm, I think I'll share it with her. I'll cut some out and save some because I'm doing a mom and me journal and my mom for as long as I can remember has been into grapes. Loves, loves, loves grapes and these are just tulip rub-on transfers. So fun and she has a glue book going so I'm going to give her some for her glue book and keep some for for my mom and me journal. Rub-ons are good on anything, on any kind of page. Glue book pages, journal pages, even on covers if you're doing maybe a grape or a wine themed journal project. This would make a great cover. This I got, and then I went and got this, <laughs> but this this I got because I, I have been doing a daily glue book. It started in 2023 and I had so much fun I did a 2024 one and that one is practically filled I'm gonna start my my next one right now and I just really really enjoy that almost daily glue booking thing I will bring you a flip through soon because like I said it's almost full and I got this I like the spiral bound the one that I'm working on right now is spiral bound. The one I did in 2023 is not. It's just stapled. And I had to do some reinforcing because I put a lot of stuff in there. So I think from now on they will be they will be spiral bound because they can hold quite a bit. I like the bigger size. They're bigger than a, a composition book by quite a bit. Right? They're if you put them end to end like that, they're almost two inches wider and a good probably two inches taller and that makes a big difference plus here in the center you have the whole page but when you're working in the front and the back you lose a little bit just because of the way that it's bound where on the spiral bound kind it opens flat and you have the whole big 
page spread for every single layout, which is awesome. But this, I thought this was really cool. It's, I believe, from the 80s. I thought I saw a date somewhere here. Oh, nope, 1994. First one's from 1940, but this particular one is from a, a bookkeeping record from 1994. Although that's still, uh, what? let's do the math, 04, 14, 24, 30 years old. That makes it antique. And it's it's got all kinds of really cool stuff in it. Vintage this up. Uh, for being 30 years old, it's not it's not aged in any way. There's no caramelization on the page pages at all. But it'd be super easy. I didn't even notice this. Specimen page. I would cut specimen out to use in a field notes kind of journal. This is great. You know, it's beautiful handwriting, numbers and whatnot that make a, a cool journal card. Fold it in half, then make a small... Put it on a piece of cardstock, fold it in half, and make a small journal cover. That would be kind of cool. I'm having all these numbers and whatnot. You know, we all love Ledger. It has a little date in it, 19-something or other. But then there's all the blank pages. I would coffee stain this up like nobody's business. Put some coffee rings on it with my coffee cup in some coffee and jazz it all up. But the reason I got it was to make it my next glue book. However, the very same day I went to Walmart and they had this one on clearance. This is a planner, spiral bound, um, almost exactly the same size as the record keeping book, the bookkeeper's record. Um, but this one's got all these fantastic tabs. So it goes July to June. So when you're getting ready for school and all through the school year and at school ends in June. So if I go to October, I have month at a glance. It does have that. So I might use this to kind of keep a record of things I've done or something like that. And then on the actual pages throughout October, this will be my glue book. And there's also notes at the back, so at the end of each month, I could journal in here, actual with a pen and paper journal, and just do highlights of the month, or reflections on how the month went, or what I want the next month to look like, or something. I don't like to reflect a whole lot. I don't like to look backward a lot. I like to look forward more often. So I might plan out what I hope for November here, but then I would have one... Two, three, four, five, five full glue book spreads for October. Here I could do pre-plan, and then even on the on the covers, this is a little bit heavier paper than the rest. So there's all kinds of options here. This would make a great glue book slash journal mix because it has all the areas to do the notes. You don't have to do that. You could just glue stuff over everything and that would be awesome too. So I'm not going to use this one right now. Maybe this will be the next year's daily glue book if I'm still interested in doing it. But I have all these wonderful pieces of paper to play with. Adding them in journals, adding them to collages and master boards, putting them in as fun things to tuck in different projects. Which was always the plan to tear some of the pages out and use the rest for glue booking. This weekly planner from Walmart, again it's a school planner and we're in October of the school year. It was six dollars and i got it for 250. right now they have all kinds of planners on their clearance rack if you want to do something like this again make sure to get a spiral bound one because that that will hold lots and lots of goodies and then the books that i got i wanted a small book to do a mini altered book and i found this one five thousand words you should know for 99 cents it's from 1946. Crap a Crap everywhere in this room. 1946 Review and Herald Publishing Association. And it's just public speaking sentences. It was exactly what I was looking for as far as size, age, condition, cover. It was everything I wanted. 
I didn't expect to find something literary. <laughs> so my thinking is I will probably end up putting this with my vintage literature collection because I, I just totally love it. So I'll have to go back and find another type of small book to alter, but it's in really good shape. I'm going to take like a Clorox wipe and try and get there's some white spots on that maybe mold. It might be where a sticker was for a long time. I don't know. And then this will go with my vintage book collection. Looking ahead to Christmas, St. Vinny's had all their Christmas stuff out. They usually have some out, but now they've got it all out. This is a book from 1989 of A Christmas Carol. And there's a few options with this. You could make a golden book type of journal, you know, by taking it all apart and then putting it back together with different pages and a little bit bigger spine. That's one option. Another option is to just take it apart and use the wonderful images in a Christmas journal and the little passages throughout a Christmas journal or holiday journal really really nice illustrations very very beautiful and in really good shape for being as old as it is so i'm going to do something with this in my christmas journal on another video i don't think it's been posted yet i showed some tigger ribbon because i do have a winnie the pooh journal project that i'm going to make here one of these days and this is a nice nice Disney's Out and About with Pooh from the Grow and Learn Library. This is also pretty almost vintage, 1996. Well, it is vintage. It's almost antique, 1996. And it's in excellent condition. Nobody wrote in it. Nobody spit on the pages or took crayons to it. There's no schmutz throughout. And so I just got this to include, because I'm not going to keep the Winnie the Pooh journal, I will be selling that when it's done, and I thought this would make a nice addition to that junk journal bundle. Look how adorable he is. I just, I still love Tigger. I just love him. But that's that. It was only $1.50 when we started. <laughs> And some books. This is a book from my friend Leanne. She brought it to me a while back. Uh, the St. Francis Society for Wayward Pets because it has a Boston on it. She said she read it. I think she said it was a pretty good book. Nice little cozy, utterly entertaining tale of unexpected chances and small town secrets. She has all kinds of books about dogs or in including dogs. I think this was at the Dollar Store, Dollar Tree, not Dollar Tree, Dollar General for $3. I've gotten one too. I don't think it's the same author though because it had a Boston on it. Uh, they're just so beautiful. Probably won't read it. Probably will just keep it. And there's some cute pictures. I think it's the same picture on every chapter. Not a Boston. Why would you do that? Put a Boston on, I suppose from wayward pets of all sorts. Oh, look at here. Look at that face. Old dogs are the best dogs. These two guys are winners of the Pulitzer Prize. Wow. And it's just all about anyone who has ever loved an old dog will love old dogs. In this collection of profiles and photographs, these two guys people document the unique appeal of man's best friend in his or her last and best years. This book is a tribute to every dog who has made it to that time of life when the hearing and eyesight begin to go, when the step becomes uncertain, but when other richer traits ripen and coalesce. It is when dogs, when a dog attains a special sort of dignity and a charm all his own. Anyway, of course there's gorgeous pictures throughout of older wonderful beastlies and stories. Winnie is 15 and Lucky is 10. Look at them. Look how lucky they are. Oh. 
Aww. I don't know if I'll be able to read them or not, you know, because even good dog stories break my heart. So I don't know. I'm what my grandma calls chicken hearted. <laughs> I got a book about boxers. To me, they look like tall Boston Terriers. Right, they've got that same sort of underbite, the same sort of pout. Um, they do have a bit more of a muzzle than Boston's, but not much. Uh, they kind of have the mask and the shock that this is called a flame on Boston's. Um, I just really like boxers, and so I got a book a book about boxers. So beautiful, they're just so wonderful. See, they kind of look like tall, tall Bostons. <laughs> they're not, you know, they're a dog all to themselves with their own personalities and whatnot. But they sure remind me of Bostons, and we all know I'm obsessed with Bostons. I wonder, complete dog, I wonder if you have to dock their tails. Boston Terrier breeds, Boston Terriers are born with a lob tail. Actually, they're, they're corkscrew, they're, the breed standard is a corkscrew like a pig. It's crazy. And their ears are floppy when they're little, but stand up as they get older. They're not cropped. And a lot of dogs who have pointy ears and short tails, it's because they've been surgically altered. And I don't want to do that. I wouldn't want to do that to a dog. You were born with a tail, you get to keep your tail. You were born with floppy ears, you get to keep your floppy ears. Yikes. But they all look like they have tiny little tails, so maybe they're born like that. And I didn't see anything in here about docking the tail on a quick glance. So, fun book from, this looks about the 90s too, doesn't it? Doesn't say. Oh wait, here we go, finally. In the very back. 1996. I am puppy. Hear me yap. The ages of a dog. Roy Blunt Jr., very funny guy, one of America's best-known humorists, did the text. And this lady is renowned for her commissioned dog portraits. Oh my God, she's got the best job in the world. Although, I would feel so guilty all the time spending time with other people's dogs that I could be spending with my own dogs, even though that's a great job, right? I, I, that's how thick my guilty conscience runs how deep my guilty conscience runs you know, like a pediatrician spends far more time with other people's kids than their own is that right i mean that's kind of awful that they spend all their time with other people's kids beautiful 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 photographs and then little sometimes long sometimes short quips from roy blunt jr please make sure to like and subscribe if you've not yet and by the way watch watch your phone when I say the word subscribe, subscribe, it lights up and there's confetti. Isn't that fun? It can tell what I'm saying. And it, it lights up the subscribe button for you so you know which button to hit when I say, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Isn't that fun? That's so fun. Perfect for my dog book collection which is growing and growing and growing since I started going to St. Vinny's. These I got quite a while ago. On, it wasn't a haul. It was just something I, I just went in and found a whole bunch of dog books. This one was a gift in 1980. Just called Dogs. It's a Crescent book. Oh, wait. 1978. <laughs> there it is. Beautiful color photographs in that vintage color kind of way. Look how cute, they're so cute. From all over the world. There's a boxer, look at that face. That is a Boston happy smile, that's what that is. And their little wrinkly foreheads. Oh, so cute. I would like to have a whole room full of these guys too, but they have such breathing problems. You have to get them surgery. And that doesn't always work and it's it's almost cruel so as much as i absolutely love bulldogs i probably won't ever get one look no hair in his eyes so cute beautiful weimariner beautiful doby with his ears left long 
Looks like they took his tail though, although it could be tucked. Greyhound. That poor thing just doesn't look healthy. The Afghans just look like they're such little drama queens. They're probably not, but they sure look like drama queens. Dalmatian. There's a the Boston. Right there's a the Boston in the middle of the mix. That's where they like to be. In the middle of everything. Aw, puppers. Puppy puppies. Mabes. Oh my god. Look how cute that face is so cute. <laughs> Yeah, bloodhounds and boxers, herding dogs and shepherds. Ugh. Anytime I'm having a bad day, I just sit down and I just look at these beautiful faces. You cannot stay unhappy. That is a stocky Boston. Holy smokes, that's a big Boston. And a Pugalicious. And the bulldogger, and another bulldogger. Gorgeous. Odd man out, we'll come back to this one in just a minute. Dogs 24-7, from the creators of the New York Times best-selling America 24-7. So this one is, this one's only from 2005, so it's not that old at all. And it's a giant coffee table size book, and it's filled with all kinds of fantastic, beautiful pictures and stories. There's a little Frenchie. There's a little Frenchie, how can you tell? Rounded ears, short little fat legs. There you go. But look how cute he is. Oh, a dog pool. I'd like to have a dog pool someday. Hounds and the beastlies that go and then visit people in the nursing homes or stay with kids while they have their teeth done. Wow. They have the best bedside manner. Oh my gosh. Up here we've got a baby bulldog, a baby boxer, the same picture, a little, maybe an Akita. Oh, the one with the yarn looking hair. They're all different up here. They're all different up here. So many pictures. Release the hounds. Ah, oh, mush dogs. That makes me sad, although they seem to love it, but yikes. We put dogs in the most horrendous, dogs and horses in the most horrendous positions. Oh, scared little babies. Yup, that used to be me with my five Bostons. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. She's got six of them. But I had five Bostons and a shelter dog. Does that count? I think it counts. Oh my God. Now there's some seriously parents. That is a live snake around that kid's neck. That's his pet python sunshine. His pet python is around his neck. This is what parenting has come to. Oh, my God. And they've given him a dog to ruin, too. Oh, that's, you know, because the python won't kill the puppy. Why would that happen? That's the trouble with these dog pictures. Sometimes I just get more than I bargained for. Aww. Bulldog. So cute. And then finally, the Hummingbird book. All of these books were 99 cents, by the way. And this one, the Dogs 24-7, is a $25 book 20 years ago. The Hummingbird book is from 1989. And again, just loads of beautiful pictures of hummingbirds. There's one in here of a white hummingbird. I saw the other day on the internet somebody had a white hummingbird visit their feeder, a rare white hummingbird. But, you know, because it's the internet and because of Photoshop and AI and everything out there, I don't believe anything I see or read. And so I didn't share it with anyone because I didn't know whether or not it was real. But there is, in fact, a white hummingbird in here. 
Oh, look at the ostrich egg and hummingbird egg. Wow. There he is. A rare albino ruby throated hummingbird. Those are the kind that we have. They usually look like this. This is what we have. Oh, this is an Anna's hummingbird. That's a different kind. This ruby throated one is what we have here for the most part. And they do come in white. So maybe that was real. And their little nests. I would love to see a hummingbird's nest one day. Hummingbird myths. Photographing hummingbirds. Watching their behavior. Different kinds. Anna's hummingbird. He's only on the California side of this of the U.S. This oh, that's the ruby one to Anna's. Where's the ruby throated? So beautiful, broad tailed. If you ever get a chance, go look up moth hummingbird. They're the size of a moth, but they have the beak of a hummingbird. They're kind of creepy. Look at him. Looks like he's made of sequins. I had a blue one in my yard this year. I didn't get to see him for more than a millisecond, but he was magnificent. Oh, magnificent hummingbirds. Well, sure. So fun. So I want to read it and learn as much as I can about them. So I will read this one. I don't know if I'll keep it with my birding books or or cut it out for the pictures. I don't know yet. And I don't have to make any rash decisions anytime soon. So I'm just gonna, for now, keep it as it is. I hope you enjoyed this. I, I have not been planning to haul. I've tried, I didn't get much. This is the most I've gotten all year. I think I have not done hauls like I used to because I have outgrown my space. I am looking to move to my studio to a bigger space in the house fingers crossed cross cross all your fingers that would be awesome but i'll keep you posted on that progress or not in the meantime i hope you have a lovely lovely crafty day go love up your beastlies give them lots and lots of treats keep them warm in the winter and cool in the summer and do all right things by them because they do all right things by us You take care. Ma take at the lake. Out for now.